literally just finished recording Daredevil Season 1. Season 2. Uh, I mentioned in that video that I liked Season 2 a lot more than Season 1. Um, I also changed my mind just like I did. Uh, I, I like it a little bit more than Season 1. Um, excuse me. God, that was gross. The main reason why is the Punisher. Everyone... You will walk away from this season remembering the Punisher, wanting and craving more John Bernthal as the Punisher. You, the Punisher is goddamn amazing in this. He wasn't that, like that pussified version in the 2004 movie, but he wasn't like a comic book. I don't know how to describe it, but he wasn't Punisher Warzone from 2008 either. Um, he was like, he was like right in between, you know, he has that humanity from 2004, but he's also like really kick ass from 2008 and now it's 2016 and, uh, you got John Bernthal as the Punisher. Um, let's, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's, let's go back to what it's about. Season two of Daredevil is after Foggy finds out, uh, that Matt is, is Daredevil. They're kind of just living their, their, uh, their lawyer life and just trying to they're trying to find new clients for their firm and they're trying to keep their business going as Nelson and Murdoch they're trying to keep that going okay um, then you find out that ever since Daredevil took Wilson Fisk out of the game that there, there's a bunch of gangs you have the the Mexican cartel the Irish mob and then the uh, um, oh fuck Mexicans Irish no, the Russians already fled. Who the hell was it? Uh, the bikers. The bikers. Uh, uh, Dogs of hell. That's what it is. Um, yeah, there's the three main gangs that are trying to take over Hell's Kitchen. Um, and right away, enter Frank Castle. Uh, you find that uh, one of the first scenes where we actually don't know what's going on. Um, because, you know, the first scenes in the, in the season two of, of, of Daredevil... Um, it's like Matt and Foggy and it's got Karen in there and it's got, um, all these characters that we know of. Uh, and there's, there's a couple of things in a bar, you know, with a, with a new client named Grotto and all that stuff. But anyway, um, the first thing where we don't know what's going to happen, um, you think it, it's a gang. It's got to do with the Irish. Uh, next thing you know, they're all being gunned down. I wonder who the fuck that could be. Of course it's the Punisher. God, the, the Punisher is just... He, people think he's an army at first. They don't, they've never seen someone take out as many people as he takes out uh, without thinking that it's just, without thinking that it's an army. And when re in reality, it's one guy, it's one guy. It's, it's the Punisher, it's Frank Castle. And um, it's, to me, it's amazing. I wish they kind of showed us from his perspective, but that would kind of give things away, I guess. Um, or make it unrealistic, whatever it is. But yeah, you know what he's capable of now. You've seen him take down an entire room of guys within like 30 seconds. And it's incredible uh, with an assault rifle. Granted, you know, it's not like as badass as like if you were to go in, you know, uh, gunslinger, pistol only. But you, you get the point. He can kill a lot of dudes in, in just 30 seconds with a rifle, okay? Um, Okay, let's let's go back from the Punisher to the, uh, to uh, Charlie Cox as as Matt Murdock and Daredevil. Um, the suit I mentioned at the end of season one, he was like really cheesy in the suit. I'm glad, thank thank fucking God that I don't know if, if it was Charlie or if it was the everyone else behind the scenes, like the production team or the director or whatever. But um, they actually made him. They they didn't keep the cheese factor that was at the end of season one. They, they made him realistic. It's like, it's back to the way he was when he wore the, the mask over his head, the pantyhose, right? Um, which is realistic. It was, it was a real, it was a real human being under the mask. And I'm glad that they actually put that person in this really badass costume. And actually that suit, that mask is destroyed. It's, it's, it's shot point blank at, in the head by the Punisher within the first two episodes. And, um, fuck, that's cool, man. Punisher actually broke his mask. Uh, there's a really, really awesome episode in this season. Um, episode three, it was. There's, there's like no action in it, almost at all. There's like almost zero action in this episode, and it's, it's one of my favorite episodes in the entire series because you get to just see Daredevil and Punisher just clashing heads and like they're battling ideologies and what's right, what's right, what's wrong. Um, and, uh, and you also see, like, the Punisher's not a total piece of shit, 
But like according to Daredevil, the way he's doing his vigilantism is very piece of shitty. Um, I don't agree with that personally, but I'm not going to talk about that. Um, yeah, and what sucks about the season is, like I said in in uh, at the beginning, you're going to walk out of this of this season wanting more Punisher. And the reason why is because the first four episodes, the Punisher is like is the is the thing in charge. He is the reason why you're like, oh shit, I I, I want to keep watching this this season because it's got Punisher. It's Punisher this, Punisher that. Okay, with Matt Murdock this and and Daredevil that as well as the Punisher. Okay, the problem is those of uh, those of you guys who actually really enjoy the Punisher like a lot. Don't get him after. Don't get him the way you wanted him to be uh, after the fir- after the fourth episode, because then then Elektra and the ninjas and Stick they take the the forefront, and Punisher kind of takes a back seat. And I got no problem with that because I enjoyed the Elektra storyline, you know, the, which is basically the rest of the it's the rest of the season. It's you got the Punisher first half, uh, Elektra second half. It's pretty much what it's about. Okay, and I enjoyed the Electra. I really enjoyed Electra in this in this season in the show because it's her it's her it's her introduction. Um, but like I was like, uh, I kind of want to see Punisher kill some more people. I want to see him kick some ass. Now he's not gone, and he is definitely a major plot point in in season two throughout the entirety of season two. But with that being said, he's not really in the action in the back half after after in episode four he gets caught and arrested. And then, like episode five through five through eight, deals with him like uh, getting help and putting being put on trial. And then uh, he's actually in prison because he like he he quote unquote snaps. Um, but yeah, so Punisher kind of takes a back seat, and I got no problem with that. I, I love the Punisher, and it sucks that like he wasn't in the, in the foreground in the second half of the season. But I'm okay with that. Okay, uh, now let's talk about Electra. Electra. In this, you find out that Matt and Electra have a history. They have they have a past together, and they fell in love pretty quick. And um, you know, she didn't she didn't buy onto the fact that uh, Matt Murdock was a blind lawyer because you find out later on that Matt Murdock was just a mission to Electra, and Matt thought that Electra loved him, but Electra was was just on a mission to get Matt Murdock for Stick. You know, Electra works for Stick, and um, this is a whole conflict with. Uh, remember in the movie. In, I know we don't talk about the movie, uh, the, you know, the Daredevil movie a whole lot, but remember how Daredevil was a piece of shit killer? Uh, he just, he killed without remorse, like, uh, just, he, he, remember that one scene, he, th- he threw the guy in, the, in in front of the oncoming train? Well, obviously, anyone who's watching this knows that this Daredevil is strongly against killing, okay? And that's actually a really big part of this season, especially with Elektra, because Daredevil in this in this show tries extremely hard to convince elect uh to convince electra not to kill because it's not the right way because it's not up to them it's not up to daredevil and electra or the punisher or stick it's up to god and the law to decide who's guilty and who's innocent you know um that's kind of it's kind of like that's where you kind of start to emotionally invest in electra and you you like electra in this show uh or generally you should you should i mean first of all she's she's appealing to look at I mean, she's hot to me but you know at the very least she's appealing and you like her smart ass attitude in this in this show um but you also kind of you kind of feel the emotional toll that's that some of the events in this season are taking on her um will uh, vincent d'onofrio makes a comeback in in this in this season he's only in it for two total he's probably in it for like a like a half an hour uh, the entire season, he's only in the season for half an hour, but you love every second of it. You love what he is co- what he is cooking up. You know that he's coming back in season three with something, if not season four, however however long uh, Daredevil or the Netflix universe runs. You know that he's he's coming, he's he's gunning for Matt Murdock and Foggy Nelson, and definitely gunning for Daredevil. Um, you love every second that the, the Kingpin is in there, and you kind of find out like what happens uh, right after he was caught up in the end of season one. Um, he actually orchestrates the Punisher's prison escape. Uh, um, let's see, where, am I, where do I want to go with this review? I guess we'll talk about the end of the season because the, the, the end of the season was pretty good. Uh, the Punisher, uh, after he's escaped, you've, you've kind of like you get the sense that uh, Karen 
and the Punisher are like working together to find answers because Karen has never really had answers for any question that she has. Whenever she has a question, she's never gotten a satisfying answer. And that, that would bug me too when, when, just think about it. You were framed for murder like she was in the very first episode of, of the series. You're framed for murder and you never like really, really, truly got an answer. You kind of just found out who it was, but you know, I don't think, I don't think she ever found out why. Uh, or, uh, I don't know, but po the point is, she never gets an answer that she's satisfied with. And when she starts on this whole Punisher, the Frank Castle case, they call it, she starts on it and like, okay, who killed this guy's family? Uh, which she, which she found out herself, by the way, she broke into his house, uh, Frank Castle's house, that is. Um, who killed this family? I, I don't think it was just a random accident. Some guy, some drunk guy shooting the gun. No, no, no that's bullshit to her. Okay. Um. She's digging for answers, and when when Frank Castle finally pleads guilty, uh, after he plead after he pleads not guilty, he pleads guilty in court. Uh, he just wanted to, he just wanted to say that what he does, he truly believes in. Uh, anyway, she doesn't accept no for an answer, and she keeps digging. And then you find out that Frank Castle escapes from prison, uh, thanks to thanks to the kingpin. You know. Um, Next thing you know, the whole, uh, there's another murder spree coming up of innocent people this time, or people who crossed Frank Castle because uh, Frank Castle's actually being framed, okay? Um, long story short, uh, Frank Castle finds out that uh, that his old, uh, what rank was he? I, I forgot his rank. Um, the cur, the colonel, the colonel, the guy who voices Mr. Krabs from SpongeBob. Uh, that guy, anyway... Uh, he was Frank Castle's uh, military superior, or buddy, or whatever you want to call him. He was in the he was in the uh, army. Army. He was in the military with Frank. I forgot what Frank Castle is, but uh, turns out that he believes the colonel believes that Frank Castle betrayed him by not joining to work with him, um, and so he orchestrated the hit on uh, for, uh, Castle's family. But he made it seem like. His drug ring was actually um, compromised so that all three gangs, the Irish, the bikers, and the Mexican cartel were supposed to trade drugs or whatever, supposed to have a drug deal. It went south, and the Frank Castle's family was just caught in the middle of it, okay? And that's why, in the beginning, Frank Castle killed the gangs, okay? Um, so, yeah, Frank Castle kind of gets resolution. Uh, he definitely dons the skull at the end of the season, and he helps out Daredevil in the very end fight, um, which brings me to the, the next part of the end of the season. Um, it's a fight between Daredevil and Elektra versus the entirety of the ninjas uh, and Nobu. You find out Nobu is alive, the the guy with the, the, throwing, the throwing swords or whatever, the throwing chains, uh, or the sword on a chain, the knife on a chain, whatever. Is after they're after something uh, a prophesized weapon called the black sky and basically they're just trying to prevent that they're just they're trying to just kill all the or not kill them but just get rid of all the the of the hand and nobu and trying to get rid of them uh just to prevent black sky from ever happening electra dies and anyone who knows anything if you, i'm sure if you've even seen the movie back in 03 uh electra dies in that movie she comes back two years later in the next movie electra the solo film Electra's definitely coming back. She is coming back. She's probably going to be an antagonist of some sort because you find out, like, we don't really know what the Black Sky is. We just know that it's a weapon and they plan on using it on Hell's Kitchen or possibly the world, okay? Uh, but you find out that Electra is a very important part of the Black Sky. We don't know how. We just know that we don't know what powers Electra has, if any at all. I just think it's because Electra. Uh, She's skilled at what she does. She's she's a good killer. She's a good hand-to-hand uh, -hand combatant. And she knows how to kill someone, okay? Uh, let's see what else. Daredevil comes clean to Karen. That, or, or Matt comes clean to Karen that he's Daredevil. And so that like that solves a whole season-long argument of... Um, you should tell Karen. Uh, just because I can't... Foggy's like, I can't keep covering for your ass. So you need to tell Karen. So he finally does at the, at the very... Like, the second to last shot of of the second season is Matt telling Karen that he's Daredevil. Um, there's that. Foggy gets a job somewhere else. Matt and Foggy, in the middle of the season, they clash heads a lot of times. A lot of good drama and a lot of good character development and a lot of good introductions. Electra, uh, Punisher, those, those are obviously the two big introductions. 
and they're amazing. Punisher is getting his own spin-off series. Uh, when we don't know. I am so fucking excited. I cannot wait for the Punisher spin-off series. I think they're going to do a great job with the Punisher. They obviously know how to handle him. Uh, they're going to get him right. And I think Punisher Season 1, whenever that comes out, that's going to be fucking amazing. It's going to be so goddamn perfect. Um, uh, where was I going with that? Um, I forgot. Anyway, yeah, uh, great season. Oh, yeah, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of good tension and uh, character development. They developed Stick's character really well, made him seem more, more kooky. Um, and it, it, they tell a classic story with Matt Murdock trying to balance his double life, and obviously he very clearly can't, but they take it up a notch because, uh, like I said, Matt and Foggy get into a bunch of fights and all that shit. Um, really good fights, like legitimate fights. They both have compelling arguments, but in the end, I guess Foggy kind of wins because Matt's still Daredevil, you know. Um, really good season, amazing season of, of Daredevil. I enjoyed it. Um, same thing with Daredevil Season 1. Uh, I, I feel like giving it a 10 out of 10 is kind of pushing it a little bit, but it's still better, to me at least, than Season 1. Now, Season 1 was a lot more, yeah, it was a lot more neat, and it had it flowed a little bit better, but um, with Season 2, there's the Punisher, and then he was just kind of cut off abruptly, taking backseat, and then you have Elektra. Um, much as I didn't like that, I'll, I'll, I, it was okay, I didn't mind it, but uh, yeah, I'll give, I'll give it a 9.5 out of 10, you know. Um, sorry, I gotta, I gotta go somewhere. I'll make this quick. Uh, nine and a half out of ten. I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm gonna be doing Jessica Jones review next. I gotta end this video. So, I'll see you in Jessica Jones.